What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got two orders for one customer. Check it out. We got the 32 inch and Mini Me. So if you guys haven't done it yet, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. Underscore is the underline. Some people don't know that. Um, you'll basically see, I, I post a lot of my stories. You would have definitely seen these cabinets about two weeks back. This one actually honestly took longer than it should because of one insane thing. And sadly, I have to say it is the coin door. I don't know what's going on in the arcade world, especially with X Arcade. I don't know what's happening, but coin doors are just becoming like scarce. I, I, I can't figure it out. Um, usually I do like double, you know, coin doors for all my arcade builds. I usually get those from X Arcade. Yes, the cabinet does come from Game Room Solutions. Game Room Solutions does have a dual slotted um, coin door. But in the past, I've, I've always seen like the, I guess the micro switch that's in them. It's just not, it doesn't like register quick enough, I guess. It sounds kind of weird. I even had some that don't even register at all because the arm doesn't even like completely click down. So I normally don't get the coin doors from Game Room Solutions, but now it looks like I'm going to have to use Game Room Solutions coin door. I always get X Arcade coin doors because they are like amazing and it sounds kind of weird because it's a, it's a door that you know you put a coin in. Um, but something about X Arcade's coin door, it just always registers, never gives me like any issues at all. So let me tell you about the customer first and then I'll talk to you about the coin door because again, like I said, this order, I'm kind of upset at myself a little bit, but it is something that was out of my hands. But this order should have been done about like two weeks ago. Um, so backtrack real quick. The customer is actually Jane's cousin. If you remember, I did the Kirby arcade cabinet. This is her cousin. I believe his name is Richard. Um, Richard saw Jane's cabinet was like, whoa, I want one, but I want a 32 inch, a bigger one. So basically I've been, this is like back in like July. So I would say like middle of July is when he placed the order. Um, basically it was about a week of me just doing the artwork, which I'll go into the artwork later on. Um, after about a week and I finalized everything with Game Room Solutions, Richard hit me up and was like, hey Vic, I have a Street Fighter RK 1UP, what can we do with it? Uh, so I modified that, I'm gonna talk about the RK 1UP. Again, I have this coin door on my mind. So you gotta remember, middle of July, I'm right now middle of August and um, you know, a month, never it never takes me a month to build especially a 32 inch raspberry pi build and again the main thing stemmed from this coin door um i always use x arcade x arcade the coin doors i just i like them the the micro switch it sounds weird but the micro switch always just registers cleanly no issue and of course it is double it's a dual coin door with the red every time i see arcade i always like the red kind of led light faceplate thing Game Room Solutions has it in yellow, but I think they upgraded it now to be red. And again, now I'm gonna have to always get the coin door from Game Room Solutions. Now I placed the order from X Arcade. Right, anytime like I get an order from a customer, I place everything. I order everything one shot. This way it's like I'm not, you know, scrambled and all that. So ordered the cabinet, ordered everything I needed, and then I ordered X Arcade coin door. And again, this is middle of July. All of a sudden it's like August 10, and I'm like, where's this coin door at? No reply, I mean, I sent an email and I'm like, hey, where's the update on this? Um, the next day, actually, I'm gonna actually pull up a screenshot of it. So I emailed X Arcade and I was like, what's the status on my order? The next day, they sent out like a big email blast to people that have orders. And again, I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups and somebody actually posted the email. This person that posted the email on the Facebook group ordered a coin door back in May. I mean, we're talking middle of July. The email I got, I placed the order middle of July. I got this email on August 9th and basically it says something about heads up your back order item is still at the Chicago rail yard, which is less than 30 minutes from our warehouse. So you got a shipment that's 30 minutes away. Um, and we are one of many businesses waiting for the pandemic congestion. I get that. Um, fortune 500 shipping company, yada, 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 nearly four months of waiting. I don't know. All I read was the beginning, which was, hey, the merchandise is at Chicago Rail Yard, which is less than 30 minutes from our warehouse. I mean, that's how I read it. I don't know how you guys are reading it, but when I got that email August 9, I'm like, oh, cool. Like, it's 30 minutes away. 
like you could probably go i'm not gonna i mean if it was me like yeah maybe i'll go rent a bunch of u-hauls and get our packages or whatever but you write a message that says it's less than 30 minutes away so i figure like okay the next day you guys are gonna you know start shipping and get your shipment in and all that all of a sudden it's like i messaged them august 17 now so august 9 was that email august 17 you're talking about a week after um they wrote to me container will be delivered this week so we will be catching up this week and next week with shipments we've been out of product for five months so it kind of annoyed me too because if you don't have the product you should have you should make you should kind of make it like where you you know hey like out of stock they don't have that on their website i should have also known because when i placed jane's order um for kirby cage she wanted a dual sided um coin door that was the last build i did with a coin door and i remember the headache i kind of had with that where it kind of took about a week and a half to get um so again sadly i i gotta call it but x arcade unless you know until they kind of ramp up i will not be ordering coin doors because I'm now nervous on the next order. This again, this took too long. I felt so bad for the customer. Um, backtrack real quick on this coin door. I had it actually just in storage, but it's a single slot. And the customer wanted double slots. So I told, I told Richard, I said, listen, dude, this coin door, I don't know what is going on. Game Loop Solutions, I guess, doesn't have it because I, I ordered one a week ago. It still hasn't shipped. And I'm like, I can't, I can't hold this cabin anymore for a coin door. I could always come down and swap out the coin door, but I got to get this to him because he wants to play. I mean, you know, who, who doesn't, it, it, it's too long. I mean, me personally as a customer, I'd be so pissed. I'm like, yo, where's my cabinet? I don't like that. I usually have a two to three week turnaround. And the one thing that really kind of annoyed me with this one was that it's something that is like literally out of my hands, like a coin door. I, I, it's mind boggling to me. I'm just going to definitely be sure next time with a coin door, I'm gonna have to just keep it simple and go with Gaming Solutions coin door because I hate to say it, but XRK, I'm gonna have to give you about another, I would give you like five months uh, and then I'll check back at your site. Great company, I'm not knocking it, but like I got an email about a container that's 30 minutes away and then a week later, hey, it didn't deliver yet, it should be in next week. Like, I got no time for that. People don't wanna hear that, it's, it's ridiculous, but Anyway, let's jump right now, talk about the RK 1UP. So big thing about RK 1UPs, yes, I modded them. I made a couple videos to help people mod their own RK 1UP. So it's really cool, you know, people still liking and watch those videos, awesome stuff. I haven't done RK 1UPs in a while because I probably in my lifetime, in my experience, I probably modded, I would say a good, I don't know, maybe 75. Oh, so I've modified a good like 75 RK 1-Ups. And again, you gotta remember like when they first came out, I was right on it modding them. So I guess what, maybe three, three years ago? I don't even know, like, I would assume three years. Um, I, I, it, I haven't really gotten much orders or people requesting RK 1-Ups. Um, big thing that people just don't understand is that these are cheap. Not to mention the size of them. That's what blows my mind. Um, you know, I had one, I bought one and then I modded it and sold it. I had like a six foot dude come to the shop and was like, I didn't realize how small it was. And I'm like, you've seen them at like Walmart. Like they're small. That's why they're priced like that. They're small. So number one was the biggest complaint was the size of these things. Um, the other thing that I always got was that I got, I had customers that would message me like six months later and was like, Hey Vic, my screen no longer turns on. Like there's power. I could hear, like a Pandora's box ticking, or I could hear the music from a Raspberry Pi, but there's no image. So I tell them like, you know, check out the HDMI, make sure there's the, the green light on the inverter board. It would just winds up the screen dies. Like the screen is totally dead. Some people even get like the white box or the green, it's just green on the screen. So people with that message be like, hey, my screen's broken, fix it. I'm like, you have to now contact RK one up and buy a new one. They won't warranty it. Once you open it up, you void the warranty, which is another thing that I wrote on all my like order forms that any RK one ups you void any warranties. I have one guy that was just like fuming and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not, I'm not RK one up support. I don't have arcade one up monitors. I, I don't know, just know. If, if you have any issue, deal with it. I don't do any warranties whatsoever. Even on my regular bills, there's no warranties. Screens die, it happens, I'll come and fix them. But an RK one up screen, I can't, it's, it's not like, I could put an LG Insignia TV in, and replace it. This, yes, you could do a Dell mod, but you're talking more money. 
once you already talk to a customer that I've already sold a mod to and want more money, I look like an asshole. They'll never understand, you know, what that means. So X nay it. Richard hit me up. He goes, hey, Vic, I have this Street Fighter. Can we do something with it? He already ordered the 32 inch Raspberry Pi. I said, let's not put another Raspberry Pi. Let's keep it simple. Let's put a Pandora's box in it. So he kind of has the best of both worlds. There's really three worlds if we were doing a PC hyperspin build. But he's got a Pandora's box and he's got a Raspberry Pi build. So this is running Pandora's box 18S Pro. I put LEDs, I put uh, LED buttons also, and we did the 2.1 stereo with subwoofer mod on this. Let's get out of selfie mode. Let's take a closer look at the RK one up. So again, I always suggest Street Fighter is the easiest and the cheapest mod I could do for an RK one up. Somebody one time wanted like me to modify a Galaga, but he wanted two button player layout. I'm like, no, I, I it's all vertical. No, like, and people don't understand vertical. So usually Street Fighter is the easiest and the most quickest, cheapest one you could do. Or now I believe they have a Marvel versus Capcom cabinet and the, uh, I, uh, what is it? Superheroes, Marvel superheroes, something like that. Anything that has a regular stock two player, six button layout is easy to mod one, two, three. So Richard had this in his house for quite some time. You could even tell by the wear. I mean, original Gen 1 stuff, there was no plexiglass on it. Again, you could see 2.1 mod. So this is stock speakers, holes, I should say here. And then I added the other holes, swapped out again, the Logitech Z313 mod. I've done videos on that all the time. And you could even see I put the volume control here just for a quick access and the headphone jack. That's the easiest place to put it. Um, LED'd out, so I do have LED right along the under here and even on the back. This is probably the cleanest you could get out of a LED strip kind of mod. You can still take out the panel without any issues. LEDs, it will go through like the grate and all that. So it looks pretty cool in the dark. So LED mod, LED buttons, and the 2.1 stereo sound on this. Again, running a Pandora's Box 18S Pro. Um, again, every system has its pros and cons. I think this is great. The screen looks good on this. Definitely digging, you know, just the, the, the look of it. You can even tell by the aspect ratio on it. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna select Street Fighter. Again, Pandora's box. So I had lying around from Micro Center. Let me lower this. It's a convenient little rocker. Micro Center from all the three quarter inch, like the 27 inch cabinets I've done. Um, I had a couple of these extra joysticks lying around. So these are actually IL um, Lorenzo black joysticks. And again, basically I removed the kind of rocker switches kind of file out the hole, just like my videos. I've done many videos on it and I put the coin buttons here and left the start. Even though like the start was here, I did put the sticker inside the button cause you gotta keep it clean. Basic stuff on a Pandora's box. Again, Pandora's box 18S Pro in a Street Fighter 2 arcade one up. So pretty basic stuff on this RK went up. He's located in Jersey. I actually met him in Fort Lee. So right over the bridge, pulled up to, I guess his family's driveway, I guess like a relative, just loaded it right into my truck and took off. This is the first thing I modded. This is super easy. It takes me about a day to mod completely. Once this finished, this showed up at the doorstep. So this here, we have the 32 inch, totally custom artwork and all that really cool collaboration. He bought it for his kids. So we do have the 32 inch cabinet running a Raspberry Pi with a coin door. And like I said in my last videos, I will always forever do dedicated four ways on 32 inch cabinets. Always. It's, it's just, it's the, what's the word I want to say? The default. It's, it's there. That's stock. I will always do dedicated four ways on it. So he bought it for his kids, did dual theming, which is really cool. So he kind of has Jane's kind of artwork, but I added Minecraft Roblox theming. He did want a Minecraft Roblox. And on the right side, soccer side, we got Juventus. I hope I pronounced it right. You know me, I'm not a sports guy. We do have a Cristiano Ronaldo Juventus right side player two cabinet. 
I love challenges like this. This is so, it's uh, to me it's really cool, especially how it just ties in very bright. Minecraft green, you could definitely see the green on this. On the soccer side here, just the black, you know, really stands out. Again, we will take a closer look at the artwork, just kind of admiring right now. Again, running a Raspberry Pi. Take a close look at the artwork now. So left side artwork took me about, I would say three or four days to complete. Um, again, he messaged me, he goes, hey Vic, I want a Minecraft Roblox cabinet. Uh, and then I think he has like three or four kids. So the next day he messaged me, he goes, hey Vic, can we do a soccer theming on the other side for my other child? So it's like the kids like Minecraft and Roblox. And then I believe this was supposed to also be a birthday gift and the birthday child is a big Cristiano Ronaldo Juventus fan. So let's start first on the Roblox Minecraft side. Take a look, first thing is the background. This has a, I, I mean, I like it. I found an abstract, it's a green, kind of green and black color. The big thing again, when it comes to collaborating or like two different sides, I try to find a neutral same style background. So let's take a look at the background first. So you have this green and black, and then take a look at the Juventus side, this black and white. Same kind of hard lines. You can see like this abstract, it's called an abstract. I always do my Google searches for abstract. So definitely these hard lines transfers over to the green side. So it kind of merges in nice and neat. As you can see right in the middle here, you can see like the lines are forming. Um, so that's like how I always start background. And then I add all the other kind of elements to it. Found a very nice Minecraft HD logo. This was a separate um, layer. So one, two, this little guy looks like he's busting out of the cabinet. Three, Roblox, same thing, Roblox logo. And then you have these kind of characters here. I don't know Roblox that much, but everything else though is retro Kate stuff, you know, multi Kate stuff. You got Don Kong, you got Sonic, we got um, Ralph, you got Contra, Metal Slug stuff. Up top, you got Mario, Spider-Man. So multi Cade, Minecraft, Roblox. Um, we'll go to the top. Let's do the marquee real quick. So again, kept the same Minecraft, Roblox, kept the box. The other big thing you're gonna notice here is what I did for him. Last name is Kang. He says, hey Vic, can you make me a custom Wu Kang kind of logo? So it is the Wu Tang logo, but downloaded the Wu Tang font, put the K instead of a T. And now we got Wu Kang. So he did definitely want that. That was Richard's request. So it is a kid's cabinet, but he had to have his custom Wu Tang logo. So pretty cool. Let's go now to the Juventus side. Cause again, we're talking about the backgrounds and all that. So black and white is the main theming of this team. Some people might be questioning the T molding Vic black side, pink T molding Richard requested pink because apparently this soccer team their colors when they play, it's either white and pink. So I guess they do have pink jerseys. That's why he wanted pink on this. So kept it simple on the right side, basically three big images. You have your background. We have the logos, Juventus. We have Cristiano Ronaldo. He did say, hey Vic, my son wants pictures of like him when he scores goals. So that's a big thing. And you got another version of the logo. Bottom CR7 logo, Cristiano Ronaldo. And again, you can see Juventus and all that. So pretty cool. I always do this strategically because there is always a little line here. So I try to get like any lettering close to this without really touching it. This way it kind of blends nice and neat. Uh, let's take a look at the control panel. Control panel, pretty cool. Got Roblox characters here. So again, same thing, multi -cade. Not too much multi I should say. I mean, you got your centipede, you got Ryu and Ken, you got your Mario here. Minecraft big here. Wu Kang logo right in the middle, dead center right here, looks great. And then as far as Ronaldo side, you can see here a little 8-bit, 16-bit Ronaldo I found online. So that looks pretty cool because you got Mario here. And same thing, logos, game logos. Another one that he requested, this one he actually sent me. He goes, Vic, I need this with him kind of scoring. And again, team logos. Little chain chomp, who saw that? Little Easter egg on that, chain chomp, I love chain, chain chomp. I'll go into the bezel and the front plate after. Let's keep going with the kick plate coin door. So check it out. Minecraft logo with the Minecraft square because I had Roblox square up top. I kind of want to do it differently. So Minecraft, Roblox logo, and again, multi-cade style characters there. And then team logo, 
Ronaldo scoring as requested. So again, you could see like how the backgrounds kind of combine. Simple erase tool with opacity brings those nice and neat. Again, I do all the artwork, I make it all, and then send out the proofs. Check out the logo I found. Kind of looks like you know this nice white rustic background. So it kind of looks like it's like boom, like there. Uh, again, there's your kick plate coin door. Now we can talk about the bezel. This one kind of had me like laughing. It was pretty cool. Um, he was big on this. He wanted this Wu Kang Clan ain't nothing to with. And yes, he did want this spelled out like that because it's for the kids, but it's also for the adults. So it was pretty cool. Bezel, he wanted to keep it simple. I made a couple of versions. Like I put like the Roblox and the Minecraft logos here and I had it like green and black. And he's like, Vic, keep the bezel simple because everything else is like, you know, in your face. Keep the bezel simple. So basically double-sided Wu Kang logo. You can see what I did also with the Wu Kang. I added this kind of gold flame ring. So you could see it there. You can see it there. So that looks great. It looks clean. The bezel looks clean. And then again, as far as your front plate, same thing, double Wu Kang, Wu Kang Clan, and then same thing, ain't none. Really cool. I, I kind of got a kick out of that. I thought it was awesome. He messaged me like three days later. He's like, hey Vic, you know, can you do a tie on like Wu Tang and my last name is Kang? And I was like, yeah, dude, I'll do it. And I think it came out pretty cool. Okay. Take a look real quick at kind of night mode, glow mode. So again, you can see the marquee looks cool. We're gonna talk about the buttons in a few, but all in all, just clean. I, I love I love challenges like this. You know, out of the box, random stuff. Yes, granted, the cabinet does not play Minecraft. It does not play Roblox. I do have some people that write that like, why put that if the you know if the cabinet doesn't play it? You never know. Honestly, HDMI you could probably just connect the computer to it and play like that with the keyboard. But that's not up to me. That's up to the customer. But again, you can kind of see 32 inch night mode. You got RK one up night mode. You could definitely see the LEDs more because it's just this. It's honestly like this right here. So again, I'm guessing most likely everybody does put it against the wall. It will glow up. You could even see the front kick plate there. Again, some people even want like, Vic, where's the LED strip? It's right here. Right on the edge. On the control panel, it's on this. Now real quick, let's look at the buttons on this. Pretty cool, very pleased with this. Buttons came from Paradise Arcade again. Maybe one day I'll get sponsored, but buttons came from Paradise Arcade. Mostly used because of this. This kind of black and white. These are the Eclipse LED buttons. I do like how this looked. I basically then bought regular red and green buttons. They don't make Eclipse, apparently. I don't think it was red. They don't make them, actually, for these colors. Um, but I like definitely how this came out. This is like the biggest reason why I used Paradise Arcade buttons because that black and white, it looks awesome. That Eclipse looks awesome. So now big thing when it came to player one side, I basically bought green and red regular buttons, not chrome like this. I've always, I always have chrome like on the side. I always like to always put like anytime I get buttons like this, I like to put chrome as like the admin buttons or the top buttons. This way it kind of distinguishes the difference. I think it looks cool. But what I did with this is that this is a regular red and green button. Basically, I take the center cap, pop it out, and then I swapped it just to kind of go with the theming here on this white and black. Yes, granted, it's not exactly like the Eclipse LEDs. Not to mention the Eclipse buttons are more expensive than like your regular buttons. But I kind of like how it is because again, you got Roblox and Minecraft. So I, I, I actually tried like taking this Eclipse black and putting it inside this red. And to me, it just, it didn't, it didn't look good. I honestly think that these are made differently because again, you could see the glow up on those whites compared to like these here. Um, but I kind of like what I did. I think, I think it looks neat. Again, did the red and green change. Player one side, green, bad top. Player two side, white, bad top. And always dedicated four-way will have the round kind of joystick on that. So that's a definite. Again, always clean wiring as always. This is running a Raspberry Pi. I do have the PlayStation controller chargers. There are two PlayStation controllers included for four-player gameplay. You got your LED control uh, controller. And again, with these newer Fire TVs, you do also have the Fire TV remote. This again, this TV right now is set to 
um, store mode. This way it powers on once you turn on the cabinet. So I do get this question asked a lot. Um, you know, I don't really do gameplay videos, but instead of doing the regular arcade stuff, I'd rather show off some different stuff. So during this whole time while I was videoing, I was under the Game Boy Advance game wheel. So you kind of saw a track mode showing off all the Game Boy Advance games. Might as well load up a game, why not? While this goes, I forgot to mention about the buttons from Paradise Arcade. Um, I did the um, regular micro switch. I do like how these click. They are a very nice click to them. Again, when it comes to consoles and handhelds, the um, Game Boy Advance, it's, you know, A, B, X, Y, L, and R. So you kind of just have to play it to kind of figure out what button does what. So we are playing some TMNT right now. I've never played this. I was actually going to aim to play the Simpsons Road Wage, but why not? So before I get my butt kicked, let's see. Okay, simple. Is there L and R? Nothing. Nope. It looks like it's a two button game. Gotta love the simplicity of that. Let's do it. I just got punched in the mouth. Awesome. I mean, stuff like this, consoles like this, you know, Game Boy Advance, it will work with your arcade sticks because it had six buttons. Again, Game Boy Advance had six buttons. It will work with your six buttons. Again, with this, you know, Game Boy Advance does have a save feature within it. But worst case, you could always shift save. You'll always see little yellow wording. So if I get my butt kicked and instead of me loading up and pressing pause and stuff, I could just shift load and it will bring me right back to where I was getting my butt kicked anyway. <laughs> Again, stereo sound. Oh, there's a dog. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> now, I'm on the subject with Game Boy. Might as well show it off real quick. Some people will go Vic. It's like pixelated. It's too pixelated. Yes, keep in mind, Game Boy Advance was not a 32-inch screen type of game. The aspect ratio on it is way different than what we normally are accustomed to. If I go into settings, and let's just say I go actually to core input... Let's see what this was, core provided, I should say. That's really what it was meant to be played as, or it's keeping the same aspect ratio. To me, I mean, it's retro. You will still always get the pixelation, not to mention it is a Game Boy game, but I'm a big fan that I've always said in my videos, you have a 32 inch screen, you might as well go full screen stretch. So I'm gonna just bring that back. I'm not gonna save my settings. And I'd rather play like that. I think it looks cool. Again, granted, Game Boy Advance is a one-player system, but it's pretty cool. Again, Vic VP Game Case Arcades. Gonna load up real quick. Simpsons Road Rage because I wanted to play this. And excuse me, I was wrong. Game Boy Advance is a four-button console because I'll show you real quick. I should know this. It's actually on here. You got your two buttons here and L and R. And not to mention, it's in your little preview screen. So excuse me, it was not a six button, it is a four button. So again, up to six button consoles and stuff will work fine. I wanted to play this. <laughs> I've never played the Simpsons Road Rage Game Boy Edition. Kind of excited to play this, honestly. All right, let's see how this goes. Ooh, oh, all right, I got Lisa. Cool. Not too bad. Whoa. <laughs> that arrow's off, or am I off? Oh. What's gonna go here? Oh, there it is. Ah, classic crazy taxi with the Simpsons. You can't go wrong. Again, same thing with this 32 inch. This is rocking the Logitech 313 controller right here on the bottom left. I always put it there. It just it blends in. You don't even see it. I always like to put it right there. This way, in case you want to put a headphone jack, you pop that in. Uh, but again, another 32 inch in the books. Richard out in Jersey grabbing the 32 inch Roblox, Minecraft, Javantis. I, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Ronaldo. Maybe Ronaldo will check this channel out. And we also have the arcade one up going out. Again, VVP Game Case Arcades. A lot more videos. V pin coming up. Still got to talk about this monster here. Big VP, Game Case Arcades.